Welcome to the Ultimate Tennis Grips Guide. In this video, all of your grip-related questions are going to be answered, including how to tell which grip you have and which grips are best for which strokes. If you look over on the left side of your screen right now, you'll see all the different strokes we'll be covering in this video, which is gonna be probably pretty expansive. And so you can skip right to that section if you have a question about your forehand or backhand or serve, so you know exactly which grip you should be using. But first and foremost, let's talk about how to tell which grip you're actually holding. First, first and most important thing to understand is all tennis handles have eight different sides or bevels. And when you hold your racket straight up and down on edge, the first bevel all the way on the top is numbered bevel number one. The next one over, the thin one angled up at 45 degrees is bevel number two. The flat one on the side is bevel number three, so on and so forth. So as a right-handed player, if you take the big knuckle of your index finger and put it on the second bevel from the top, moving over to the right, that's a continental grip. As long as your hand is spread across the handle and your index finger is curved out. If you move over one spot to bevel number three, now we have an Eastern forehand grip. Bevel number four is semi-Western and bevel number five all the way on the bottom is full Western. The only tennis grip where your knuckles should be straight across the handle is an Eastern backhand grip, and that has your index finger knuckle all the way up on bevel number one. So that's our starting point. Now you know all the different grips. Let's dive right into the forehand so you know which of these grips work well and which ones don't. Let's talk about the full Western forehand grip first. Because your hand is behind or underneath the racket, you're going to have the furthest contact point in front of your body, as well as the vertical swing coming up to the ball is much easier, so you're gonna be able to get that heavy, heavy topspin. But those low balls are really difficult because the racket face is facing downward, and so you have to really manipulate your wrist to be able to hit a very low ball. Second, let's talk about continental grip for the forehand. If your hand is behind this, it makes it a lot easier to really drive through the ball and your contact point is actually the furthest back from all the forehand grips that we're gonna talk about. And it also actually makes it easier to switch and slice from that position as well. But it really is hard to generate any topspin and to be able to hit those high balls because your hand is in the back position instead of underneath the grip. Thirdly, let's talk about the Eastern forehand grip. So because your hand is still behind the racket, you can drive like you can with a continental grip pretty easily. But it does make it a little difficult to hit topspin, but much easier because your hand is a little further over to generate topspin than in the continental grip. Lastly, let's talk about the semi-Western grip. So it's gonna be the easiest one to generate the top spin that you're looking for, for heavy top spin, from a low ball, from a high ball, and from a mid ball position. But it is a little bit difficult for some people to drive with a semi-western from those low balls as well. Here at Essential Tennis, we recommend you're somewhere between semi-western and eastern grip on your forehand because it's the best of both worlds. You can hit good topspin, you can drive through the ball, you can hit high balls, you can hit low balls, and you kind of have a good combination and good variety of all. Now it's time to talk about the one-handed backhand, and the very first grip we're gonna talk about is the continental grip. Now with the continental grip being on top, it's great for hitting low balls because with this grip, you have a little bit more stability here, but it's not so good for hitting top spin. So if you're trying to hit top spin with this grip, don't try, because it's not gonna work. Now it's time to talk about the Eastern backhand grip. Now this grip gives you the most variety for hitting top spin and drive. The reason is, having your hand or knuckles more behind the racket allows you to rotate more, creating more top spin and more drive. One of the major drawbacks, though, of the Eastern backhand grip is when the ball's extremely high or extremely low. Other than that, this is a great grip to have for creating spin and drive. The final grip is the semi-Western backhand grip. Now, you probably see this on a lot of clay quarters where the ball gets up high. This is the major benefit of the semi-Western backhand grip. Now, the grip goes even further around, so if you notice, on a normal ball, the racket face is closed, but on a higher ball, that's totally fine. So if you're playing on a surface that allows, or where the ball bounces really high, this is the grip you probably wanna use. Now, the con is, low balls. With the low ball, the racket face is really close, so you're going to find it very difficult to hit those low balls. Now, the grip we recommend here at Essential Tennis is the Eastern backhand grip because it provides the most variety for spin and drive for your one-handed backhand. 
If you'd like comprehensive coaching on how to hit your one-hander as solidly as possible, go grab $1 access to our online training program called Academy. Simply go to www.essentialtennisacademy.com and sign up. Before we dive right into the pros and cons of different grips on the two-handed backhand, we need to first define what is the dominant hand and non-dominant hand, because I'm gonna be referring to both hands individually and talking about different grips in each hand. So if you're a right-handed player, your bottom grip, your bottom hand is your dominant hand. It's your, your right hand. It's the bottom hand. The top hand is your non-dominant hand. And this is important because we'll be talking about different grips with each. So in this example right here, my dominant hand, my bottom hand, is in a continental grip which is the second bevel over. And my top hand, my non-dominant hand, is in an Eastern forehand grip. This is my left hand. So starting from the top, this is bevel one. And for a lefty, I would go number two, number three. That's Eastern with my left hand. If you forget any of these or you get confused, just go back to the start of the video because I talk about each bevel and what grip it ends up being when your big knuckle is on that bevel. Now let's talk about your main options with the dominant hand, your bottom hand. And I'll be demonstrating here right-handed. And I've started with a continental grip. And this basically gives you the best of both worlds. It's essentially a neutral grip that allows you to keep the racket face square very easily without it being super open or super closed. So it gives you the best of both worlds of being able to drive through the ball when you want or drop the racket head and swing vertically to create topspin when you want as well. So continental grip is kind of right in the middle. The other two main options are either sliding over to Eastern forehand with your dominant hand, your bottom hand. And what this does compared to continental is it opens the racket face. Now my bottom hand has the big knuckle on bevel three. This opens the racket face. That doesn't mean that I can't close it, but what happens is my hand starts kind of getting twisted around. My forearm, my shoulder starts to have to get twisted around by my non-dominant hand to close the racket face. And some players hit a great two-handed backhand like this. Other players find it really hard to keep the ball in play because the racket face is constantly popping open. So your third main option with the, the bottom hand, your dominant hand, is to come all the way up above continental and go to closer to an Eastern backhand grip with your dominant hand. And as you can see, this really closes the racket face compared to continental. Continental is essentially square. Eastern forehand opens the face. Eastern backhand really closes the face. And so this makes it easy to create a lot of topspin, but a lot of times players struggle driving through the ball and hitting a little bit more laterally and creating more depth and more drive. So bottom line is Continental is kind of a nice even balance, but you can experiment with making small shifts. Don't think that you have to go a full bevel one way or the other, but Continental should kind of be your starting middle ground and then maybe make small shifts one way or the other if you find yourself either sailing a lot of balls or hitting a lot of balls short in the court. Now let's talk about the top hand, the non-dominant hand. I'm gonna turn the other way because now we're studying the left hand here and I'm beginning in an Eastern forehand grip. If I was left-handed hitting a forehand, this would be an Eastern grip because my big knuckle is on the third bevel. And this is a great place to start because it's a pretty square, neutral starting point with the racket face. If I were to turn my non-dominant hand up towards continental, that starts to open the racket face a little more. And you can still square the racket face by turning your hands and by using maybe your dominant hand to help turn the racket face and square it. But for most players, it's a little bit awkward to have to do that. And a lot of times it results in really floating and, and flying a lot of balls too, too far. If I go below Eastern to semi-Western, you see it starts to, to close the racket more. And so this could be better for hitting a little bit extra topspin, but it starts to become a little bit aggressive if you go further down towards Western. But semi-Western can be used to hit with a little bit heavier spin, a, a little bit heavier shot that curves a little bit more. Going beyond that, down to full Western, you see the racket face really starts to close a lot. In fact, to square the racket, to hit any kind of drive, you now have to kind of reach your dominant elbow up into the air and it starts to get kind of awkward to drive through the ball. It's doable, but it's a pretty aggressive grip. So the bottom line here is what we recommend as a starting point is continental with the dominant hand and Eastern forehand 
with the non-dominant hand. And then you can play with probably non-dominant hand first and try to shift it up and down a little bit to find the grip that helps you keep the ball in play the easiest. The further towards the bottom you go, the more closed the face will be. The more towards the top you go, the more open the face will be. Now let's get into the serve grips. And first, let's talk about the semi-Western grip. So it's gonna be easy with this grip to be able to come directly at contact become your, because your hand is behind the grip and you're just pushing towards the contact point. But from that, you're also gonna have a really hard time coming up with the racket up on edge, and you're gonna end up with a waiter's tray motion pushing out to contact. And so you're gonna end up with a very low contact point with that grip. Second, let's talk about the Eastern grip. So because your hand is still behind the ball, you're gonna have trouble coming up on edge and you're still gonna be pushing out to contact. So you're not gonna get that highest contact point. But the nice thing about this grip is that when you're switching from semi-Western to continental, it's a good middle point to be able to feel out your serve and still be able to have some success with spin as well. Now let's talk about the backhand Eastern grip. When you have this for your serve position, it's very easy to generate a lot of topspin and use that for a kick serve or a spin serve, but it's very, very difficult to manipulate your wrist enough to be able to hit a flat serve at that highest point. Lastly, let's talk about continental. It's gonna be the best of both worlds because you're gonna be able to reach up to that highest contact point on your flat serve, as well as use it for your slice and your kick serve to be able to generate spin. The hardest part is, is that sometimes for beginners, it's really hard to start in that continental position. But here at Essential Tennis, we really recommend that the continental grip is the best grip for you to get the most out of your serve. Now it's time to talk about volley grips. And the number one volley grip we're gonna talk about, or the first volley grip, is the continental grip. Now this is where your hand is on top. Now this is the most versatile grip because it allows you to hit great balls on the forehand and backhand without being compromised. Now one thing, generally when you come from another grip and you try to use the continental grip and you do funky things like this, it's gonna feel really awkward. So you have to make sure you're using it the right way by using a correct setup on both sides. But with that, there's a lot of pros to using the continental grip. Next grip we're gonna talk about is the Eastern backhand grip for the volleys. Now, with the Eastern backhand grip, your grip's gonna be around the racket, which is very comfortable, or at least very stable, on the backhand. What you're gonna find the biggest issue is when you have to hit forehands, it feels very uncomfortable, and you're gonna probably hit a lot more angles because of the racket face angle on this side. So, again, pros are on the backhand, very comfortable when the ball's in a nice neutral position. Make it a little bit more difficult when it's lower, or especially on the forehand side with the Eastern backhand grip. Now let's talk about the Eastern forehand grip. Now, just like the Eastern backhand, it's the opposite, where it's very comfortable on the forehand side, but not so stable on the backhand side. And the reason why is because your wrist position. With the Eastern forehand grip, your knuckle and hand is behind the forehand volley, but it's not really behind the backhand volley. So you're gonna be really good on neutral forehand volleys, but feel really awkward on low volleys and even high volleys on the backhand side. So again, pros solid here, not so solid on the backhand side. Now this is really important. We mentioned two different grips which some players use, which meaning they use an Eastern forehand grip for the forehand, and then they decide to switch for the Eastern backhand grip on the backhand. Don't do it. The biggest issue is that when you're in a fast exchange, you don't have time to switch your grips. This is why I recommend the Continental Grip as our recommended grip here at Essential Tennis because you don't have to switch grips and it gives you the widest range from hitting neutral balls, low balls, and high balls where both Eastern grips have some limitation on either low balls or the opposite hand without having to switch the grip. So again, I recommend the Continental Grip as the Essential Tennis preferred grip. If you'd like step-by-step -step coaching on how to hit your volleys with precision and accuracy, go grab $1 access to our online training program called Academy. Simply go to www.essentialtennisacademy.com and sign up. The first grip we're gonna talk about with the overhead is the continental grip. On the plus side, the continental grip allows you, just like on the serve, to pull the racket up on edge and then release the racket head to create a lot of racket head speed a lot of power. It's what gives you the maximum potential to create speed, to create power, and actually finish shots and put balls away. 
On the negative side, the continental grip, just like on the serve, is the most difficult to learn. For most players, especially beginners, the whole idea of coming up on edge and then turning the racket face is a really foreign one, unless they grew up playing a lot of overhand throw sports. So those are the pros and cons. Very, very high potential, but also very challenging and difficult for a lot of players to learn. Moving over one bevel to Eastern forehand, now it's not quite as advantageous as Continental because the racket face is starting to open up in the backswing, just like on the serve. It's a little bit of a waiter tray position. You can still create some good racket head speed here. In fact, there are some high level players whose grip is a little bit over towards Eastern forehand that have great overheads but your potential will never be quite as high as having an actual continental. So on the plus side, it's a little bit easier to hit than continental. You can start to line the racket face up a little bit more directly, but you're sacrificing racket head speed by using a little bit more of that pushing motion. Next is the semi-western grip. And Quite frankly, I, I really can't ever recommend this grip. Just like on the serve, now we're going into full push mode. There's really not gonna be much of a racket drop. There's not gonna be any pulling up on edge. There's not gonna be any lag or snap of the racket head. Everything's lining up and just going through the ball towards your targets. This ends up being a very low contact point. It ends up being a very pushy motion. It can be very easy starting off because you're just lining the strings up and just pushing out towards your target but you'll never have very much racket head speed. Um, you'll also be very, very restricted by target. Most players who use this grip on an overhead can only hit one side of the court and really struggle to hit the other side of the court. So there's some serious drawbacks here, and it's not a grip I would ever personally recommend somebody staying with if their goal is to improve and develop their game to be a completely different level than where they started. So the bottom line is that the official grip that we strongly recommend you learn is Continental for the overhead here at Essential Tennis. We're not gonna be purists and say that it has to be Continental or else you have a bad overhead. As I mentioned before, there are some good solid players that have maybe a little bit stronger of a Continental grip or maybe even kind of on the edge between Continental and Eastern. As long as you're not going all the way over to strong Eastern or semi-Western, then you can still have a good overhead, but to really reach your full potential, learning how to pull up on edge and snap and release the racket head will always be your best possible shot, even if it's a little bit more work and takes a little bit more dedication. So now let's talk about the slice grip. And the very first grip we're gonna talk about is the Eastern forehand slice grip. Now, some players like Nadal use this grip. Well, it adds a lot of spin. So if you're trying to create a lot of spin and really slow the ball down, that's great. Now, one of the cons of this grip is it makes it really hard to drive through the ball because of the position of your hand on the racket. With your position of the hand in the Eastern grip, it's very easy to pull down, but very hard to drive through the ball. So just make sure if you're gonna use this grip, you're gonna use it for creating a lot of spin. The next grip we're gonna talk about is the Eastern backhand grip. Again, the opposite of the Eastern forehand, we're gonna pull my hand around. This is great for higher balls where you can really see how the racket face and the hand lines up and it's really solid. Where it breaks down is when the ball's really low where you're gonna probably have to cut across or do some really weird manipulation of the racket to control it on the low ball. So the pros are higher balls on the backhand side where you can really get behind it, but when it's really low, that's the con, you're gonna really feel uncomfortable with those low balls on the backhand slice. Our final grip for the backhand slice is the continental grip with the hands being on top. Now, this is the most versatile grip for the slice, meaning that you can deal with high balls and low balls without having to give up any kind of stability. Now the cons for this grip is really learning it. Generally coming from different grips, either an Eastern forehand or an Eastern backhand grip, you tend to have the racket face too open in the beginning, but stick with it because if you master this grip, it's gonna give you a huge range of what you can do with your backhand slice from driving to adding spin to hitting all kinds of different flavors of the slice. The drop shot is a really delicate shot that requires a lot of finesse and control of the racket face. So grip is really, really important. We'll talk about the forehand side first. On the forehand side, in my opinion, the most 
neutral, kind of pure way of hitting the drop shot is with a continental grip. Starting with a continental grip, it's very easy to open the racket face up, which is what you want. At contact, you want your racket face to be much more open than what it would be on a drive or a topspin shot. And so continental makes it very easy to just kind of gently open your hand, which opens the racket face to allow you to hit that soft touch. Using that as a baseline, if we go to Eastern forehand, now the racket face closes more. Now you still can open the racket face enough to be able to hit a good drop shot, but you see that now my elbow and my hand have to really start turning inward to create the same amount of open face. And so that's the drawback with the Eastern forehand grip is it closes the face more, which means your hand has to make up for it by turning further underneath the ball. If we go the other direction from Continental and go up towards Eastern backhand, now what's happening is we're opening the face way up and more than we want to. And while I was demoing this, it was really weird for me to actually feel like I had to close my racket face in order to get the, the correct angle. Granted, I'm used to Continental, but we don't need the racket face this open with an, an Eastern backhand grip. It's just excessive and having to close the face in order to actually get the right angle, to me, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And it also kind of telegraphs the fact that you're opening the face way up super, super early. So on the forehand side, definitely recommend Continental. You can shift towards Eastern. In fact, Kevin here at Essential Tennis has a great forehand drop shot and he hits with close to an Eastern forehand grip. So it's doable, but definitely do not go past Eastern forehand grip. And I definitely do not recommend you go up above Continental because then the, the racket face starts opening way too much. On the backhand side, it's the same story. This is all about touch and finesse, which is in turn all about opening the racket face and finding just the right angle to get the trajectory you need to drop the ball softly on the other side of the net. And so very similar to volleys, Continental is a grip that works really well on both sides to make it possible to softly open up the racket face without having to turn your grip and use a different grip on, on both sides. If I switch over towards a Eastern forehand grip, now my racket face opens a lot and I would actually have to kind of turn the racket to find the right angle by closing my hand. Otherwise the racket face ends up being super, super open. And unless I was right up next to the net where I could touch it, I wouldn't ever want to open my racket up that much. If you're back around no man's land, it's going to end up just popping up in the air and probably falling short. On the other hand, if I go up towards Eastern backhand, now my racket face is closing and I can compensate by really opening my hand up a bunch more, but it gets really awkward really quick. You'll see in my demonstration, I'm having to like really pull my elbow off to the side and it's super uncomfortable to get the right angle with the racket to get the ball up in the air so it can softly drop back down. So the official grip that we endorse here at Essential Tennis is definitely continental. You can get away with small shifts in either direction, but if you're gonna shift one way or the other, you probably want it to be a little bit more on the closed side than continental. You can, it's easier to open up a little bit extra than it is to start with a really open face and have to try to close the racket to find the right angle and the right trajectory.